Welcome, Welcome to this webinar on the 2010 11 Relocate Awards, and sorry for the slightly delayed start. In this webinar, in this webinar the last before entry of the February, on Friday the 18th of February, which is now only a fortnight away, we'll be answering your questions and talking, talking live to one of last year's winners to find out why they entered and how winning an award has benefited them. And first, for those who didn't catch our previous webinars, let's have a quick recap. There are 10 awards covering specialist relocation so really, categories, so there really should be something for everyone. What do you, what do you think value is the value of entering these awards? Well, I think there's huge value for everyone. First of all, it raises your profile and, and your company's profile. It's great for helping with your business planning. It motivates you and your team and boosts morale. And, of course, it impresses potential investor, investors, customers, management team. I mean, it's a great way of um, promoting excellence. So, plenty of good reasons, and I'm sure that's got everyone keen to get going with their entry. The next part of the webinar is going to focus on answering some of the questions we've been asked about the awards. We'll start with some general ones and then move on to questions on individual categories. Please do call or email us if you have any other queries uh, that we don't cover in this session. Contact details will appear on screen at the end of the webinar. Yes, and don't forget there really is a lot of information on the website, including a special awards section, um, as well as our um, special awards relocate extra and webinars as well. Right, right, let's get going then on our first question, which is, I'd love to enter this year's awards, but I'm not sure which category would be most suitable. Can you advise me? Well, with 10 awards this year, there really is something for everyone. So I think as we go through um, each individual award, that will help people decide which is the right one for, for them. And of course, we welcome people, if they want to get in touch by email, we can help them further refine the process. Yes, indeed. Um, there have been lots of questions about how to enter, how to maximize one's chances of winning, of, of course. Uh, what do you have to say about that one? Well, I think I'd recommend people to listen back to the first webinar by Sue Shortland, who gave lots of really in interesting and helpful suggestions there. And just to remember that the entry process is very straightforward, marked against criteria. And I think if you follow the guidelines, you'll have everything you need. Yes, indeed. Our, our website really does have lots of comprehensive information, so do have a look. Um, Fiona, next, with uh, Relocate's leadership becoming ever more international, we are being asked quite a lot whether we accept entries from outside the UK. Oh, yes, absolutely. Most of the categories are open to international entries. And indeed, this year, quite excitingly, we've got a specific one for international destination service providers. But of course, remember, our ent entries do have to be in English. Yes, indeed, that's a useful point to make. Uh, can we move on now to a question about the judging process and how that works? Well, it's all very completely independent. Um, people send in their entries and then they're scored according to um, criteria. And again, the, the points for each section are given on the entry forms. The judges um, go through things looking for um, points to mark against. Um, so it's like filling in a tender, a job application, getting your key points and, and also those things that make you shine. Make sure they stand out and put in plenty of evidence all the time. No marketing speak um, and you know just give it your best shot. Yes. Some very useful pointers there, Fiona. Thanks very much. Um, we're now going to move on to our category-specific questions. Um, the first up is Best Relocation Strategy Policy. Fiona, we've been asked, does the award cover a specific time period? Well, we don't want to be prescriptive about this. I mean, really, these are the 2010-11 awards. So really, anything that you've done last year in 2010, but it doesn't matter if you started in 2009 or it's a project that's going on to 2011. The point is that you've got to describe the journey. It may be something um, that's in response to, say, the current economic climate and how you've changed your policy. So it's about the interesting thing. We just don't want... Um, to people to go too far back in time. Mm. I'm sure there are some very inspiring stories out there and for people to tell us. And of course, if anyone's in any doubt about whether their particular um, strategy or policy would be eligible, they can always give us a ring, have a chat, and uh, we'd be very happy to advise them about that. 
Uh, which brings us to our second category, uh, technological innovation in relocation. Several questions about this one. Um, the one is whether this award could apply to HR software that's used to manage international assignments. Another is whether a cross-cultural support tool or a payroll and tax solution would be eligible. Yeah. Yes, well, all of those, because this, this category is about a solution. Anything that is innovative, that aids or supports relocation or makes the experience better for those managing or undergoing a move. Um, technology can cover a wide scope of things. It can be relocation management software, tax tracking, solutions for global mobility training, cross-cultural, um, it's really endless. It's about the application of what's really improving things. Um, and of course, um, as we said in our first webinar, we're keen to get people involved in the recruitment talent management side involved. And there are all sorts of tools um, and technology involved on that area. So it'd be good to have some examples of those. So this is a very broad category. Um, it's really all about um, something which is innovative and something which is a solution. Absolutely. Thanks, Fiona. That brings us on to Inspirational HR Team of the Year. A question that's been coming up quite frequently is a, a, a very interesting one. How do you define team in this particular context? Oh, yes. Well, that we do have a lot of queries about that. And I would again recommend people to uh, listen back to the last webinar where Sandra Barker had some very useful examples of how her winning Nats team um, pull together a team for a particular project. So that's really open to anybody. You don't have to have a large team, but think, have you got a project team working on something specific? You may be a single um, HR person responsible for mobility issues, but your wider team can certainly be the rest of HR benefits. It could be um, the talent management team. And it can also include your suppliers, and these service people. So if you just feel, oh, there's only me, actually there is the wider um, organization and your suppliers as well. So please don't be uh, too concerned that you haven't got um, a very large team. Yes, indeed. Um, that's a very important point to make, I think. Our next category is Relocation Service Provider or Team of the Year, one of our, our biggest categories. Um, some people, again, have been wondering whether, given the diversity and different sizes of the potential entrants in this category, it's possible to, to really judge them against each other. Is it comparing perhaps apples and pears? Well, um, what we do and the judges do is look at what entries they've got that year and then divide them into different sections which reflects the year's entries. So there are very um, large companies that get involved, the work big name people and we've had previous winners for, such as um, Carter's Pricoa Robinson's last year um, but we also have smaller uh, companies winning or getting highly commended or a specialist section so um, this year in particular um, this last year we had um, Beswick Relocation Services who were a shining example and we're going to hear from Laura from there shortly but you'll also remember um, Debbie Britton from Britain Relocation Services who won in 2007-8 who had a really inspiring um, case study on um, moving Reckitt Ben Kaiser staff to East, York East Yorkshire. Yes, indeed, that was a, a very memorable case study, wasn't it? The very first Relocate Awards. Um, in the previous webinar, we had several of last year's winners who very kindly came on to talk about their experiences of winning the awards and what that had done for them. Um, now, on the line, we're absolutely delighted uh, to have Laura Barsby of Beswick Relocation Services, who Fiona has just mentioned, um, the winners of the Relocation Service Provider Team of the, the, the Year Small Company category uh, at the 29 and 10 awards. Um, so, hello, Laura. We're delighted to have you with us. Hi there. Oh, good, um, loud and clear. Thank, thank you very much for joining us today. Okay, it's my pleasure. Jolly good. As well as winning last year, you at Beswick were highly commended in the 2007-8 Relocate Awards. When you first entered, just going back to what Fiona was saying earlier, did you feel your company was too small to have much of a chance of winning? Um, no, 
absolutely not. I mean, um, we are, although we are a, a small to medium-sized company, we certainly felt that it's not so much the size of our company, it's what we offer and um, the fact that we offer something different from perhaps the, 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 the bigger, larger players in the industry. So I think it's not necessarily, I think as you mentioned just previously, a case of comparing apples with apples. There are different things that we have and different qualities that we can bring to the table, I think. So I don't think we necessarily have any concerns in that respect. Mm, I'm sure that's going to be a very useful answer for some of the smaller companies who might be thinking of entering. Um, can you tell us how winning last year's Relocate Award has benefited your business? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, like I say, as a, as a company, we wanted to really, part of the reason we wanted to enter the Relocate Awards is to sort of shout, I suppose, about what we think we can bring to the table as a company and in terms of our different approach. Um, so the benefit to us certainly was to be able to um, continue to promote ourselves, the company and our philosophy and um, the way that we work in the sense that rather than promoting the usual, perhaps more conveyor belt relocation with quite defined assistance and defined services, we are very much um, of the view that we want to be looking at individual cases on a case-by-case -case basis and trying to assess people's circumstances and look at them as individuals and look at their families. And um, I think that's something we want to try and get across. And um, it's certainly part of our reasoning for entering the Relocate Awards was to um, push forward that strongly and also to um, get our name out there as well, which I think certainly we've been able to do. And of course, also it's all fantastic in terms of our promotional items. I mean, um, we've been able to really, off, off the back of winning the awards and also receiving the highly commended category in the previous year, to be able to, to um, have that link with Relocate and um, promote ourselves as having had that recognition, which is fantastic. Well, that all sounds great. So it's been a useful sales tool, really, and, and a PR opportunity. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Mm, that's great. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you was, um, we believe um, at Relocate uh, that entering the awards is, is a valuable process in itself, even for those who don't win. Um, did you find that? And what did you feel were the benefits of entering? Um, I mean, certainly, obviously, we'd like to win, and we have done, which is fantastic. Um, I do think there's obviously there are obviously benefits in um, entering in the sense that by putting forward your entry, we are one, getting involved within the industry and with um, other contributors and with Relocate, which I think there's always benefit in that, even if you weren't actually to go on to win. Um, I think it's still really important for um, people in the industry to be coming together and to just have this dialogue and to be working together anyway. Um, I also think it's quite a useful process because by the very nature of our entry, we are breaking down what we do and having a look at it and thinking, actually, no, we, really do, we do a really good job in, in this respect or looking at the way we do things. So I think it's fantastic in that respect as well. Yes, yeah, several of our previous winners have said the same thing, that it's very useful to analyze what you're doing, what your offering is, and you know, see not only what you're doing really well, but also perhaps if there are any areas in, in which you could yeah, improve at all. Exactly. I think mm. in, that, in that respect, I suppose, it, it's, um, you can go back to perhaps the benefits of entering, even if perhaps you're not successful and you're not um, awarded in that sense, you're still able to break it down. And sometimes, I think, unfortunately, in day-to-day -day life, if you are so busy, um, it's having the opportunity to take a step back and kind of assess the way you do things and why you do things. And that's, so it's, that's a valuable um, exercise in itself, yeah. Yes, indeed. I think we, we all agree with that. Um, finally, I wanted to ask, what would be your advice to companies wondering if they should take the plunge this year and enter the awards? I would say absolutely give it a go. Uh, I think it's, like I say, I think it's a fantastic opportunity, even if you weren't actually recognized as an award winner. I think there's still benefits in either being um, commended or even just the fact that you've entered the awards. I mean, like I say, we obviously in previous years we were um, commended and um, delighted to have won last year. But I think there's an element of, even if you don't actually go on to win, the fact that you are um, engaging with other members of the industry and getting your name out there, I still think it's fantastically beneficial. Laura, that's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed for being with us today. Laura Barsby from Beswick Relocation Services. Thanks very much. We focus now on the best property provider or solution category. Several people have asked us what sort of companies can enter this category. Um, given that our previous winners have all been in the serviced accommodation fields, does that mean it's just for service accommodation providers? Over to Fiona now.
No, it's, a, it's open to a very wide range of uh, property solutions. Um, they can be in all sorts of sectors. Obviously, we very much welcome the service accommodation who are very intrinsic in, in uh, relocation. But there's also lots of other areas such as letting agents, estate agents, uh, special specialists, perhaps relocation, conveyancing people. There's the furniture rental section um, and companies large or small, anyone who's got a really good property solution that's adding value. So again, this is a very broad category for, for people to enter who are in the property field. Yes, exactly. Oh, well, that brings us on to uh, Rising Star in Relocation. Uh, this one is designed to encourage the emerging talents and exceptional abilities of somebody within any section of the uh, relocation industry. We've been asked the following, I think, very interesting question. Um, in the past, the Rising Star Award has been won by people who have recently set up their own DSP businesses. Would it be okay to enter a member of staff who's been with us for several years and risen from junior admin to senior manager level? She's made a huge impact on the business and continues to demonstrate her passion for our company and all things relocation. Well, it sounds this person is a, is a perfect candidate, and that is exactly the sort of person we're looking for, whether they're in the corporate HR side or whether they're working for um, a destination service provider, a relocation management company, or some other um, service provider. But, of course, it is also open to rising um, new companies large or small so it's it's encompassing everyone what we want to see is the potential there people who are rising to the top or whose companies are rising to the top um, and it's all about um, motivating and uh, rewarding people who are doing great things to set um, get them off to a good future and it's tremendous uh, for promoting the industry as a whole as well it certainly is. And uh, if, again, if anybody is in any doubt of who they should enter, whether they should enter a particular person that they have in mind, a particular company, do uh, ring us up, send us an email, and we'll be very happy to uh, discuss it with you. That, that brings us to one of our most hotly contested categories, which is Relocation Personality of the Year. Several people have asked us what sort of person would be a worthy winner of this award. Yeah, no. Yes, now sometimes this category causes a bit of confusion because mm. the entry form is much shorter and people um, can nominate somebody else they think really deserves recognition because they've contributed significantly to the profession or the relocation industry or international assignments or whatever and have achieved something wider, given something back um, over many years perhaps or have achieved something very outstanding. Um, so every year we, want, we don't know who's going to be put forward or indeed enter themselves because you can enter yourself, that's that absolutely fine. But it, it is something special um, and to be backed up by a number of different referees who are also saying this, this person has contributed greatly to the wider good. Um, and uh, as people know, we've had winners on the HR side, Carol Moore of GSK, who was um, known for contributing a lot um, and set up the rug group, for example. Then we've had Martin Humphreys, um, again, great contribution to education and schools, and um, Ian Crichton, who was a great character, and um, lots of people got behind him last year. So it, it's dependent on who, at the time, this year, people feel deserve that recognition. So please, if you'd like to complete an entry, the shortened entry form, send those in. If you want to get together with colleagues across the industry to add referees, please do that. Um, and we'll very much look forward to who's going to be put forward this year. Yes, that will be fascinating to see who our winner is this time round. Our next category is the first of our three new awards for this year, Green Achievement, which recognises an organisation that's excelled in environmental initiatives and practices. Who is eligible to enter this category, Fiona? Well, we're, we, let's say uh, with this category, um, it again was people saying um, we ought to be doing something about the environment, Green Achievement. We don't really know where we're going and what, what should happen. We've picked up that a lot of the entries had um, 
stated that they were doing various green initiatives and um, as environmental concerns are top of the agenda for lots of organizations we felt really across the industry we should be making a start here so what we're looking for they may only be small steps but it's the industry the profession and corporate clients moving forward in the right direction perhaps the big corporate organizations um, uh, via the HR company are seeing their vital environmental statements come coming through and going into the international mobility team. So what are they doing to deliver things? It can be on a range of things from renewable energy resourcing, re recycling, it could be about transport, it could be green travel, um, a whole raft of things. So what we're looking to do is see, find out what you're doing, small steps, and let's all work together um, to promote this important area for the environment as a whole. So please don't feel your company has to be totally green all the way through. Let's see what's going on and promote best practice um, by learning what other people are up to. Yes, and it's worth adding that there are lots of useful notes on the entry form for this particular category and indeed for all our categories. Moving, Moving on, on uh, our second award is Excellence in Employee and Family Support. Janet, yeah, what's the thinking behind this award and who is eligible to enter? Well, we wanted to set up a category in response to people, perhaps uh, the specialist providers, who felt that they didn't perhaps naturally fit into other areas and other award categories and wanted to get involved. Um, this award is very much about putting people at the heart of relocation and it's about the services you deliver and the recipients, how, how they benefit, what value they, they achieve and as people are at the heart of things, um, how you look after them. Um, we've got some excellent examples of that and they needn't necessarily um, be organisations, they can be for example schools. Um, education consultants, childcare, immigration, language tuition, cross-cultural concierge, all sorts and manner of things um, can be brought into this um, who are really making the experience of the individual and their family better. Thanks, Fiona. I'm sure that's clarified that one for everybody. Um, our final category, another of our new ones, is Best International Destination Services Provider. Fiona, does its title mean that you can't enter if you're in the UK? Um, well, certainly if, you, if you're in the UK, you can enter, but you've got to be dealing with um, international cli clients. Um, but this award was brought out really to encourage um, perhaps the smaller organizations who are uh, uh, in Europe and around the world who wanted to get involved and highlight and showcase what they're up to. And another question that we've been asked about this one is uh, whether some sort of quality accreditation is necessary to enter this category? No, it's not um, necessary to have got an accreditation, but I think you'll be the sort of company that will be well on the road to getting an accreditation um, because it's all about um, demonstrating excellence in delivering core DSP services. So that includes things like orientation, home search, settling in departures, etc. And we're looking for those companies who are doing an outstanding job and uh, monitoring it all and are um, setting themselves up as a quality organization. So it's about promoting quality, exhibiting quality, and also encouraging people to come forward and be accredited and um, that it's all wor worthwhile. So really what we're looking for is international business. <laughs> That's quite right. And in fact anybody, uh, for example, who's a Euro member, they obviously have the Euro quality seal. So all sorts of organizations like that should be encouraged to get involved and we'd love to hear what's going on internationally. Thanks very much, Fiona. That brings this Relocate Awards webinar almost to an end. Just to sum up, we've got a great breadth of categories for you to choose from, and entering will bring huge benefits to you and your company, so please do enter. The deadline for receipt of entries is Friday the 18th of February, so you've only got a fortnight to get your entry in. Full details of everything are on our website. 
Yes, and I would encourage people to uh, don't forget that date, get your entries in, but also to remember the prize at the end. Um, we have our fabulous um, gala awards dinner, which will take place on Thursday, the 12th of May, at the Institute of Directors. Um, people who've been will tell you what a fabulous evening it is with fantastic food and wine and entertainment. Um, we're thrilled this year to have celebrity guest speaker um, Fluella Benjamin, now of course Baroness Ben. Benjamin and she's a distinguished broadcaster and actress. She's cultural ambassador for the London 2012 Olympics and a children's presenter and campaigner. Uh, many of you will probably know her from the long-running um, children's programs and um, Play Away and Play Days, but she's achieved so much and is really very energized, very enthusiastic, does a huge amount of work for children and promoting the country and young people. So um, I think you'll find her very inspiring. Um, so uh, if you want to get up, get on and reserve your tables, reserve your tickets, we'd be delighted to hear from you. So thank you very much for listening to this um, third and final awards webinar. I hope you found the series interesting. You can catch up with the previous webinars via the website. There will also be um, a question and answer um, section put on the website, um, which will be by the beginning of next week, and this recording will also be up there. So um, please do enter, and we look forward to having any individual um, queries if you've got those by email. Thank you very much, and good luck.